Hello and welcome to the FlexPro YouTube channel. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. And as always, let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next. So today we're going to put a head-to-head -head battle. We've done a few of these. Today we'll be juicing versus blending. Now for a lot of us, it kind of sounds like the same thing. But as you'll see in this video, there's some differences that may make one superior. Let us know in the comments now what you think will come out on top. Without further ado, let's let the health battle begin. Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about the advantages of juicing versus blending. When do you use juicing versus blending, okay? Okay, juicing is really good in chronic health states. Like you have this chronic sickness recovering from chemo or you have this disease you're trying to recover from. That's very, very good because you, you can concentrate a lot of vegetables in a very small amount and drink it. It's easy to go down. The problem is that it's hard to do green juices without fruit. And when you add the fruit, um, like apples and pears and all these other things, you're going to spike the sugar. Even if you do carrot juice, that's a lot of sugar. And then we spike the insulin, so that's a problem. Um, but I do recommend it in situations where you're, you have a chronic health problem. Okay? What's much better for the majority of the population is blending because you use the whole f uh, f vegetable. Okay? And so you can um, take vegetables and blend them with maybe a little bit of berry and you get all the fiber. That buffers the insulin response because okay? fiber slows down the spike of insulin. Fiber feeds your microbes. You have all this flora. You have like a hundred trillion microbes in your gut. No, actually, I think it's a thousand trillion microbes. You have a hundred trillion cells and a thousand trillion microbes growing inside and outside. And in the gut, they live on fiber. So rather than give them bran fiber, give them a vegetable fiber. Um, so that's going to actually really help feed them. So it's better for the general population. So um, what I like to do is I like to take kale, okay, my favorite. And then this has a lot of vitamin A, it's phytonutrients, it's good for the liver. It's, um, it has, a, I like the dark green. This is organic, get it from Trader Joe's. I freeze this so it lasts forever, okay? Keep it in the freezer. It's already clean cut, it's convenient, all right? Then I like and I freeze little sections of parsley. Parsley is very bitter. I mean, it's interesting that both of these are garnishes that no one eats on the plate, right? <laughs> we want to take this parsley, combine it with the, the beet to make a, a very powerful uh, bitter shake with lots of vitamin A and a lot of phytonutrients. Good for the eyes, good for the liver, good for burning fat, good for fat on the liver. Um, and I'm not trying to lose weight. Um, I'm going to recommend myself, I use the berries, organic berries. Um, you can put like a cup of this. Now, it, it may in some people slow them, their weight loss down if they have a really, really slow metabolism, but for the most population, the majority of the population, you can do a little bit of berry, okay, like a cup, just to offset the bitterness. So um, I do that, and I also put lemon juice. I like the Italian volcano. Why? Because this is grown on the volcanic ash in soils in Italy and it's this lemon juice is amazing. I put like two ounces of lemon juice in that shake. Okay, why? Because lemon juice will prevent kidney stones. And um, you don't have to put it in the shake. I, I like the taste of it and uh, it gives it a nice little lemony citrus and also it prevents any st stones. Okay, I will also add my wheatgrass juice powder, one teaspoon, because that's like an extra boost of actually a juice powder with some interesting properties. Yes, it has vitamins and minerals and chlorophyll, but one thing about wheatgrass juice is that it has a unique factor that has to do with a growth factor. It doesn't make you grow, but it's, it's mainly for your skin. Um, it's a good healer, and right now there's some studies, I'll put some links down below, that they use this on burn patients because it burns the skin, it heals the skin. So it has a healing factor for the epidermis, the skin, also internally the skin, like you have uh, irritable bowel syndrome, ulcers in your stomach, it's really good for that. Um, even in some cases of leprosy with ulcers on the skin or diabetic ulcers on the feet, uh, this is a good healer, an overall healer um, for collagen, making you healthy. So this is one of the reasons I stick that in there a teaspoon, blend it all up, 
and it makes two of these, okay, these jars. So I'll drink one of these in one sitting. I use a straw, a big straw, and I drink it down. I'll take the other one, put it in the fridge, and I'll drink that maybe later in the evening. Okay, I'll do this. So I do the kale shakes not every single day. I might do them twice or three times a week. The other days I'll use just salad or vegetable. Okay, so that's how I get my greens. If I'm doing the shake, I don't do a salad, but the shake is convenient. I drink it. I feel great. My liver feels good. If I miss that, I don't feel as bright. It's also very hydrating and it seems to increase the oxygen levels of my body. I can just breathe better when I drink that. I think the parsley in there is like a real key element. Blending and juicing are getting more and more popular, but there is some confusion, so I thought I'd clear up a few things. First of all, if you blend something, it doesn't make it juice just because it's liquid. In juicing, we remove the fiber and we keep the sugar and the nutrients. In blending, we put the whole thing in there and you keep all the fiber, so it's a whole food still in that sense. Obviously, and with blending, you use a blender. Uh, in it, juicing, you use a juicer. So a juicer is something that can separate the fiber from the liquid. Uh, it shreds it, puts pressure on it, and you get the, the liquid out there. So why would we want to do one or the other? Because it's m about vegetables. It's about fruits and vegetables. And this is a convenient way of consuming them. However, in blending, it's difficult to consume more than maybe one pound or so a day. And in juicing, however, we can consume as much as 10, 15, maybe even 20 pounds of fruits and vegetables in a single day. And we're getting all of those nutrients into our bodies, everything except the fiber. And because vegetables are cleansing, that means that this is a cleansing method. It's supercharging your body with nutrients, you're assisting your, your liver in getting rid of, of toxins. So this is most suitable for people with a chronic disease. Someone who might be too weak to digest food at all, they, they don't have much of an appetite, they eat something but it does them no good because they don't have the energy to break it down. Digestion is very expensive, it takes a lot of energy for the body to process the food. And if we juice, then it's pre-digested. It's extremely simple for the body. The nutrients basically just flow across the intestinal membrane and they're in the bloodstream and we're done. Very, very toxic people, people with cancer and autoimmunity and degenerative disease, uh, they're prime candidates for this because if you're toxic, you need cleansing primarily. So juice provides concentrated nutrients. You can't get that much nutrients in you from real food unless you remove the fiber. So here it tastes, it, juices taste very good. Even things that you don't think of as sweet per se, uh, like lettuce and cucumber and things like that, they turn out sweet when you juice them because you're concentrating nutrients uh, and you're concentrating the sugar. So you're getting the vitamins, minerals, and enzymes, everything that you need to process these foods. You're getting all this, this nutrients in their natural form, but it is also important to not heat the juice and don't let it sit too long. If possible, you want to use a low speed juicer that doesn't uh, heat or fling the juice around too much so it gets exposed to a lot of oxygen. So low speed juicer and drink it as fresh as possible within minutes or a couple of hours. Don't drink it the next day because a lot of the nutrients will be gone by then. The concentrated sugar can be a good thing and a bad thing. If you're really weak, people who don't have a lot of energy, they don't have the energy to digest things, that sugar is a great energy source. They can get, get some energy, they can get some blood sugar, that's an easy energy for them. But if you are more just trying to do this because you're overweight and you're extremely insulin resistant, then juicing may not be the way to go uh, because if you're working with ketosis and intermittent fasting, this will definitely throw you out of ketosis.
here, I just wanted to add a little bit more weight on the juicing versus blending debate, if you will. And I just want to give you my take on where I sit with both of these. You know, I've got juice plans, I've got blending plans, I've got pure juice only plans, I've got a 5-2 juice diet plan, we've got cold pressed juices, 600 calories a day. Equally, I've got blend only plans, and there are reasons behind all of it. As you know, I set out on the mission to juice the world. It's nearly 20 years ago now. And the mission was to have a juicer and a blender to be as common as a kettle and a toaster in everybody's household. And moreover, so they used both of these machines. There has been, of course, during that time, there was a juice phenomenon, but there was also a blender phenomenon, but mainly in the Nutribullet phenomenon. I mean, it really has been a phenomenon. Now people don't say, have you got a blender? They say, have you got a Nutribullet? We all know a Nutribullet is essentially just a blender. It's a really good blender. But what it did, it enabled people to see it in a different way. And I love that when there's a game changer in the market that comes away. You're responsible for more people having more fruits and vegetables again. The challenge, of course, is that people are using their Nutribullet wrong. And I was getting really frustrated seeing this which is part of the reason why I created Super Blend Me. Because you either had the situation where people would get hold of their, their Nutribullet, they'd get hold of their cup, and then what they would do is they would literally put in, I don't know, three carrots, they put in some broccoli, they put in some kale, they put in some celery, they put in this, and all of a sudden you've got this thing filled up, a little bit of water, and then even in a, a Nutribullet, it would still end up almost like a cold soup. You may have even been there yourself. So a lot of people then got put off of blending vegetables. So you ended up just people were blending fruits and people were blending nut butters. Now the challenge with that was that they added too much nut butters, usually peanut butter smoothies. They're using the Nutribullet, but how come they're not losing weight or getting healthy? Because actually it was just, they dominated by using, I don't know, nut butters and syrups. A lot of people just added, I don't know, maple syrup to them and everything else instead of going, well, how do I use this correctly? So I'm gonna do my level best in a very short space of time so that you can communicate this with other people. Because people, first of all, don't know the difference between a juicer and a blender. I mean, that's the first thing you need to cover. A juicer extracts the juice contained within the fibers. A juicer extracts the juice contained within the fibers a blender blends all the fibers and the juice together. Effectively, your mouth is your blender, your stomach essentially is your juicer. Okay, the rule that I have for blending is very clear. Do not drink any blend faster than it would have taken you to eat the raw ingredients in that blend. In other words, if you had three carrots, I mean, you think of how long it would take you to genuinely chew and digest that carrot. So if you had three carrots, stick of celery, et cetera, et cetera, going into a blend, you don't want to drink that in one minute, two minute flat. What you want to do is make sure that however long it would have taken you to eat the raw ingredients is how long it should take you to have that specific blend. I go one stage further. I really don't usually blend anything that I wouldn't really consume within about 10, 15 minutes maximum anyway. Certain things belong in your blender, some things belong in your juicer, some things cross over, some things don't. Here's the things that do not cross over. Banana. Bananas go in your blender, it goes in your Nutribullet, whatever, they do not juice. They're too much of a complex carbohydrate. Although 87% pure organic liquid water, for some reason you can't extract it. Too much of a complex carbohydrate. Belongs in your blender. Can, of course, be frozen, chopped up, boom, fantastic. Nut butters, clearly, I mean self-explanatory. I've been doing this for 20 years, so I don't know who's doing this course. So you would think, I know you can't put nut butters in the juicer. You will be amazed. Trust me, I've done this for 20 years. People say, can they put ice in the juicer and stuff like that. Ice goes in your blender. Butters, powders. So it's like paste, butters, powders, milks. So almond milk, so coconut milk, so oat milk, so yogurt, those kind of things. Also, avocados. Avocados, again, 84% water. Challenges, they are too much of a complex fat. So therefore, if you try to, certainly don't try and put an avocado in like that in your juice. There's a big stone in the middle. But even when you cut it out and you have the flesh, you put it in, the juicer cannot extract the juice contained within. So what you need to do, it's nice and creamy, so you put it in your blender. Spinach, and I'll tell you how to juice spinach, but can go in your juicer. But it also can go in your blender. So a little bit, of, especially a really decent blender like a Nutribullet or something similar, and the same with kale. In fact, to try and extract juice from spinach in a juicer, you've got to pack it in really tight, especially if you've got a fast juicer. Broccoli. Again, it can go in both. You've got a really good blender, but the stem, the harder the fruit or veg, the more juice it will extract. So hard fruits and veg really belong in your juicer. The softer belongs in your blender. So mango, although mango can go in both machines, I would say if it's fairly hard mango, not fully ripe, then maybe put it in your juicer. But do you know what? Nine times out of 10, you want to chop it up and put mango chunks in your blender. Pineapple really does go in both. So pineapple, even with the skin on, can go into your juicer. 
or you just take the skin off, put it in chunks, put it in your freezer, bam, it goes in your blender. So th these are the cross-pollinators, as I call them. Berries really keep out your juicer. Every time, you gotta keep them out of juicer. Any berries, frozen berries, fresh berries, they need to keep out your juicer. Nuts of any kind need to go into your blender. It seems self-explanatory, but dates, pitted, go in your blender. All the powders, the super greens, the power greens, all that kind of stuff, the, the berry powders. Seeds of any kind goes in there. Oils, if you're using something like three, six, and nine, essential oils, they go in your blender. Cucumber, again, it's technically a fruit. If it goes in your blender, it's so loaded with water that it blends quite well in a Nutribullet. But you get so much juice from it, it yields so well. I think it's the best juice on planet Earth. There you have it, folks. A battle for the ages, juicing versus blending. Who do you think came out on top? Let us know in the comments. We look forward to talking to all of you soon. Have an amazing week.